Uh, hi, Carl Herbst, Visual Effects Supervisor, Sony Pictures Imageworks, and we're at the VIEW Conference. So what are your thoughts about this conference? I know it's the first time you're here in Turin, Italy for it. Uh, it's been great. I mean, it's been really inspiring to see a lot of different talks um, and see the students' involvement. Um, the venue is fantastic, um, and it's actually a really relaxed conference, which is really nice, and it, does, it feels much more like summer camp for everybody involved in the industry rather than some sort of very polished event. So we're in Turin, Italy. I wanted to get your thoughts on the global nature of the visual effects uh, industry today. Well, it, I mean, everybody, all those different artists coming from across the world. I mean, Imageworks uh, obviously has a headquarters in Vancouver, and now our, our old headquarters in Culver City is sort of the satellite. We have artists from around the world speaking multiple languages, um, and it brings a lot to the table in terms of the quality of work, um, inspirations for people. Um, so the creativity level from different cultures really comes into play for, as we're making these movies. There's a lot of attendees that come straight from high school, colleges, to get to hear speakers like yourself. What's it like to speak to that potential next generation of talent? <laughs> In some ways it was a little hard at first because I wasn't exactly sure what to show them, like how technical to get versus more a high level. Um, and so, and I also kind of got reversed on me. I thought I was going to do my main presentation first and make that sort of the um, introduction to come to the workshop and go a little deeper for people who wanted that tech level. But I actually had my workshop Monday morning, so it got a little reversed. But the students Monday morning actually were asking a lot of really good questions, and uh, some of them stayed after to even go a little bit deeper on some of the stuff, which was really great. And then the presentation we did today, we had lots of people come af afterwards, and just love the fact that Ron Kerwan and I, we were working together on this film, he was a production designer, just the relationship we had on this movie, because we were together almost three years, and I, everybody kind of appreciated seeing that come through, the partnership of two people on a film. So I think they really liked the presentation. When it comes to uh, technology, it's always evolving. Can you talk a little bit about how that evolution helped bring Smallfoot to life, some of the things we were able to do? Yeah, I mean, the computing power differences over the years. I mean, we really rebuilt the hair pipeline and how we shade hair from the ground up on this movie. Um, and the hair shading that we had been doing for years was very old. Um, and I joke about this idea of what I call um, institutional folklore. You know, like everybody's like, oh, we use this technique for a long time, keep using it. And you're like, well, why do we still use this technique and dig through it? Um, and with the computing power we have now, I mean, we could have never done a character that had nine million hairs on it, even just a couple years ago. Um, but the changes we made in shading, the changes in computing power, um, and the memory footprint you can use now on any given one of these machines really allows us to just kind of push the detail level up as much as we want, which is actually something that we struggled with on this film because at first everything was so detailed that it's like, well, what's important? And that's when we've started adding things like a lot of atmospherics and toning things down and shallowing at the depth of field and just kind of being more cinematic about how we're trying to approach the emotional moments in the movie. What impact does technology have big picture? Like if five years ago this idea was out there, would it have been something passed upon because of the fur issue? I think we would have had a different result. I think you know uh, we would have pushed on it, but we would have never gotten to the same level. I think that's what happens in a lot of these cases. I mean, uh, Bill this morning in his presentation from Pixar, it's like, well, here's this thing we did on Incredibles a few years ago, and look what we're doing now. Um, and it's the same thing for us. I go back and look what we did on Surf's Up and water and how we solved that problem and then how do we solve the snow. And those solutions and the way we approach to get to those solutions is so similar. It's just that the technology allows you to go much farther. When it comes to uh, technology, I know there's a lot of talk from, from different people I've been speaking with here about this move to real time with, with game engine technology and other types of technology. How, how is that influencing filmmaking from your perspective? Well, the first big one is really in layout. I mean, I think the idea of taking all these models and going into a game engine and getting real-time feedback from camera movement is the first step, which really frees things up. Because that can be an area that the back and forth between the director and the head of camera can get really kind of drawn out and long. Um, and a lot of times ends up being much more of, hey, give me a lot of versions and I'll go to editorial and see if I can figure this out, rather than just doing it together in real time. So that's the first. The second, I think we're starting to integrate it now, is allowing animators to get faster feedback. And that's going to be the next step for us. Mostly because, one, we want a higher level of resolution to the images that they can see of the environment around that they're interacting with, and simultaneously get really fast uh, rig feedback as they're trying to get, you know, uh, puppet these characters. 
the last step for Imageworks that I know that's on the slate is really trying to get more real-time rendering um, for lighting, which would be a, a big, big plus. Um, but we're going to approach that a little bit differently rather than using game engine technology. We're going to go much more of a, a real-time uh, Arnold version on a graphics card. And so that's going to take a little bit longer to get into production. Do, do you guys have direct correlation? For example, Sony has its PlayStation and they have their own technologies they're sharing in that capacity? I wish there was, but there really isn't. Um, as a matter of fact, I ran into somebody here at the conference who's from you know, PlayStation. They're just like, I wish we actually talked more often, but we don't at all. And uh, there was a period of time we tried years ago, and it's just everybody's in their little silo solving the problems they have, either getting a game released or us getting a movie released. And, we just don't cross paths. I wish we did. Uh, instead, what seems to be happening is there's people who are in the industry who left that start making their own companies to make software and, and use the game engines and things like that to solve problems that they always felt couldn't be solved within uh, the industry itself. And they're coming back with those instead. But sticking with sharing, to talk a little bit about how you guys, the different teams within Sony working on different projects share as things are pushed forward uh, in, in CGI. Well, I think the, one of the great things about Imageworks is the fact that we're a company that still does visual effects and animation, but we're also really a gun for hire for animation, just like we are for visual effects. So, you know, a lot of people are like, well, Sony Pictures Animation, you're that. And we're like, well, no, actually, Sony Pictures Animation hires us to work on their films when they're ready. So just like Warner Brothers hired us in this case to work on uh, Smallfoot. So looking at the year we just had, we had uh, Moji Finish, then we had uh, Hotel Transylvania 3, this film and Spider-Man coming out this winter, all going through the same pipeline, all through the same facility, and the technologies are building on each other. So as I'm actually getting ready for my next film, the stuff that they did for Spider-Man, I'm looking at going like, well, that's gonna be the new du jour, so let's start talking about what do we wanna pull from that and start building on for the next films afterwards. Um, and that's one of the great things about a company like ours and the size we are is that artists are going back and forth between live action and animation, and they're bringing something new with them every time because they go to one of these films that had a lot of explosions in it, a lot of big effects, and they bring something back to the animated features like, hey, I learned this on this show, and then we just all the information gets shared across the company.